And welcome to the MLB Network's presentation of the World Baseball Classic. It is with a lot on the line this afternoon that we welcome you to Chase Field in Phoenix, where Team Canada takes on Mexico in the first round of Pool D action. There have been a handful of games played in Pool D thus far. It's Italy, the surprise of perhaps the entire tournament, setting the pace 2 0 on top of Mexico 1 1, the United States and Canada. Each looking to win their first games in the tournament tonight. And again, a reminder the top two teams advance to the second round in Miami. So, what about the scenarios for the two teams playing the early game today? Mexico advances with the win against Canada here and a U.S. loss tonight. Mexico is eliminated should they lose to Canada this afternoon with the U.S. beating Italy. The situation a bit more dire for Team Canada. If they lose, quite simply, they are out. They do have a chance, however, to advance and control their own fate with wins against Mexico today and Team USA tomorrow afternoon. And with that, we welcome you inside Chase Field with Jim Cott, Sam Ryan, Matt Vaskersian. Jim, let's talk about this from Mexico's perspective. They had the disappointing loss on Thursday, big stirring win over the U.S. yesterday. Yet the pitching part of the equation is something for them to be concerned about today. Well, the way they beat Team USA was getting great pitching yesterday. But as a result, they had to use a lot of their pitchers. And with the pitch count restrictions in the World Baseball Classic, there's only seven pitchers available today for Mexico. And that'll be a challenge for them to get some production out of those guys. Mexico was able to answer the call yesterday. And they did so thanks to the leadership of Adrian Gonzalez drove in three runs, two of them coming on this home run against R.A. Dickey. Mexico never looked back. The emotion that Mexico played with yesterday was measurable, and you can see the looks on their faces. There was a big game atmosphere here yesterday, indeed. As for Team Canada, Jim, their offensive productivity not where they wanted it to be yesterday in their opener. Well, if they can run the pitch count out for Mexico's starters today, that's when this lineup can begin to do some damage, and that's what they have to do, particularly with men on base. 3 of 13 yesterday in their mercy rule loss against Italy with runners in scoring position. Joey Votto and Justin Morneau were effectively neutralized. They combined to go just one for four yesterday as Italy continues to roll through Pool D. What about Canada today and their state of mind in terms of their lineup? Sam Ryan is standing by with their hitting coach, Larry Walker. Thanks a lot, Matt. Larry Walker, you guys have yet to win a game in this WBC, but two wins. You basically control your own destiny now. What's the demeanor like of this Team Canada? Well, you know, we had a little meeting. Ernie spoke to the team and just told him basically what you said. You know, it's up to us. Uh, we don't have to worry about what anybody else is doing. It's completely our deal. We win, we keep going on. So we're, we're up to the challenge, hopefully. What do you need to do to get your three, four hitters going, Votto and Morneau? Well, I like to get some guys on base, you know, those guys live for the big moment. So hopefully our table setters can get on base and, and give them that moment to, uh, you know, when they usually shine is uh, driving and run. So uh, that, that I think that'll be a big motivator for them. Larry Walker, Canada hitting coach. Thank you so much. And good luck today. Thank you very much. Yeah. Matt, let's send it back to you. Sam, thanks. It is effectively an elimination game for Team Canada. Mexico trying to come back and win two in a row after an upset loss on Thursday. Jim, Sam, and I are back with the starting lineups and the opening pitch from Phoenix right after this. And welcome to MLB Network's presentation of the World Baseball Classic. With a lot on the line, we welcome you to Chase Field in Phoenix, where Team Canada contends with Team Mexico in first round Pool D action. First of two from this venue this afternoon as Marco Estrada takes the mound for Team Mexico. One win, one loss. Mexico with a, an upset loss on Thursday at the hands of the coming Italian team. And a victory yesterday over the heavily favored Americans. Marco Estrada's last year with the Brewers, 138 plus innings of work, almost a strikeout per inning of work for him yesterday, last year rather, and a 3.64 ERA as he goes to work against a Canadian team, Mr. Jim Cott, who is rather up against it here this afternoon. Yeah, the, the key early in this game is to get Estrada's pitch count up and get into that bullpen. In, in, this, in this format, excuse me, Matt, in this format, we've talked so much about the restrictions that out of 14 pitchers, Mexico has only seven available. And most of those are not their top line relievers. 
So things like that, if they can get a number, you, you hate to think this would influence the outcome of a game, but if they can foul off a lot of pitches, get Estrada out of there early, get into those second line relievers, I think this Canadian lineup can begin to do the kind of damage uh, we expect them to do. One ball and one strike to count to Tyson Gillies. And there's a bouncing ball to second base. Romero Pena there again this afternoon. And there's one gone to start the game. Well, Canada manager Ernie Witt had to watch a, uh, a walk off mercy rule loss yesterday. The hands of Team Italy, 14 to 4, the final score. That's the bad news. The good news. Canada does control its own fate. A win today, a win tomorrow over Team USA, and Canada moves on to round two in Miami. There is British Columbia native and Milwaukee Brewer property Taylor Green who takes strike one. It's a nice thing about this format. Out of everybody plays three games, you can afford one bad day, but you can't afford two bad days. It seems as though everywhere you look, there is a Milwaukee Brewer theme here in Pool D. Yesterday it was Yvonne Gallardo facing Ryan Braun today Marco Estrada facing Taylor Green 12 Brewers all told participating in the World Baseball Classic only the twins have more here and it's a ball and two strikes like Gallardo yesterday Estrada comes with a power fastball you pointed out in his uh, stats more than a strikeout in any good live fastball. Green fights him off and dumps a base hit into center field. First baseman, number 19, Joey Otto. Mexico manager Rick Renteria, his day job bench coach with the San Diego Padres. And he was among those pleased as can be with the way things went down yesterday. It was Mexico facing effectively elimination last night. They were able to stave that off with their win over you over the U.S. And here is Joey Votto now in the lineup today as the first baseman for Team Canada. Given the concerns over Joey Votto's bulky knee, Ernie Witt plans to rotate he and Justin Morneau between D.H. and first base for most of the tournament. At least for as long as Team Canada sticks around. One and one to Votto. Good career numbers in the World Baseball Classic, almost a 500 average. Votto was kept quiet yesterday, 0 for 2, scored a run. Go a long way toward beating Team Canada when you can keep the likes of Joey Votto and Justin Morneau back to back MVPs quiet. And that was the case yesterday. They combined to go just one of four. Morneau waiting on deck this afternoon. And Joey Votto lines a base hit into right field. to back one out singles in the Canada half of the first. That Joey Votto got a fastball to his liking and a hitting count and this is something uh, Team Canada has not been able to uh, to do a lot get some men on base when their power hitters like Justin Morneau can do some damage. Here's Justin Morneau now one for two yesterday. Our Sam Ryan had a chance to visit with Team Canada hitting coach Larry Walker before the ball game. And Larry told Sam the key to getting Votto and Morneau going in part is getting guys on base in front of them. That has happened so far this afternoon in their opening of this one. The one out single by Green Votto singles and a chance for Morneau to do some damage. Yeah, 
and this is when they can do some damage and that's the advantage for Canada. You get a couple of men on and all of a sudden the pitcher says "Ooh, now I got two men on I got to face more no you get a little cautious. Next thing you know the counts two and oh. And it feeds right into Justin Morneau's hand. There is some prior experience here between Morneau and Estrada. Not a big sample size. Justin three for four against the Brewer right hander. Bernie Witt lining up Team Canada the same way he lined him up yesterday. Seven out of the nine hitters left handed including the first five to start the ball game. And it's three and one now on the former American League MVP. I don't know if that had a little effect on his knee but he had to make a, an abrupt halt pitch inside just where lefties like it more no lines it down in the corner. Reed will score easily. Now it looks like Votto can score but at the last minute third base coach whoa. And let's see his reaction because you put the brakes on like that and you have a little balky knee. That can be painful. You know, it, it did look, however, like Tim Lieber, the third base coach, made the right call in holding him up. No question. I think Joey would have been thrown out by a couple of feet. But you're right, there is always concern regarding Fado's knee. So Fernando Valenzuela comes out, the pitching coach for Team Mexico, makes an early visit for Marco Estrada, who falls in further jeopardy here of running behind. It's already 1 0 Canada. The RBI doubled by Justin Mordo. Now Michael Saunders, another powerful left-handed bat with runners at second and third. Well, Saunders went right after the first pitch breaking ball, and that visit by Fernando may have been. You got first base open. With a right-hand hitter coming up next. Uh, Saunders went after a breaking ball. I, I would think in this case they're going to try to make him chase something and not give him uh, a fastball that he can drive, at least in the strike zone. Interesting note, and attach whatever you will to it, but there have been three games played in this pool, Pool D, here in Phoenix, and the team that scores first has won all three. It's Team Canada on top today, and things could not have gotten off to a better start for Ernie Witt for a number of reasons. You're on the board, and you're making Marco Estrada throw a lot of pitches. Here's a second run that will score on a bouncer that gets through off the bat of Michael Saunders. They wave Morneau around. He crosses the plate. 3 0 Canada. And a good start gets better still. Well, spot on with that, Matt. It's exactly what Team Canada want. Just a breaking ball that Saunders dribbles up the middle, but they not only have three runs on the board with one out, but if they can get Estrada out of the game early, uh, they've got some second and third line relief pitchers that this lineup can go at and uh, expand that lead. Here's the catcher Chris Robinson the first right handed batter that Estrada will have a chance to face. Saunders is running pitch is taken for a strike no throw down stole the base for the Canadian right fielder. Well 
Well, let's see. Got a good jump. And obviously, catcher decided he either lost the grip on the ball, or decided he had no chance to throw Saunders out. All right. Chance for Chris Robinson to drive in an additional run. That one bounces away from Humberto Cota and all the way to third goes Michael Saunders on the wild pitch. Well, that's good alert base running. You know, anticipation. Saunders had the proper lead, even though the ball was out in front of the catcher, Coda. Saunders, right as soon as the ball bounced away from him, he broke for third and made it easily. Here's the 1 1 home. And Robinson cashes in with an RBI single. It's 4 0 Team Canada with one out in the top of the first. Here's the converted pitcher, Adam Lowen. On the ground at third, the Cruz to Pena, taken out on the slide, but they're able to double off Lowen anyway. The first thing to go right for Mexico all morning long. Not before Canada gets four big early runs after just a half inning in Phoenix. Team Canada with its back up to the wall on top four zip. Another rainy, unseasonably cool day outside. Chase Field inside. The action is hot. You think about this slide by the catcher, Chris Robinson. Yeah, a little bit of a late slide, but a terrific play in turning the double play. This angle, it, it tells you that it was a, a clean play because Robinson was able to get the bag. But on the side view, I think it illustrates that Robinson might have been a little bit late. It's something that Team Mexico may or may not have taken exception to. We'll know by the end of the day, though, because after today, these two teams aren't going to face one another again for another four years. Ramiro, uh, Ramiro Pena made a made a great uh, pirouette. Even though it was a little contact, he made a strong throw, got out of the way. Pena bats second. It's Eduardo Arredondo that leads things off for Team Mexico. 28 year old Montreal born right hander Chris LaRue on the mound for Team Canada today in an elimination style afternoon. Canada already off to a great start. Four runs in support of the big right hander in the top of the first. <laughs> Now uh, first baseman Joey Votto has moved back but uh, they really respect the speed uh, that Eduardo Adondo see at third they're very shallow. Maru obviously uh, a lot of experience as a, a relief pitcher because he, he pretty much works out of a set position even though he's a uh, starting pitcher which normally you would wind up. Full count now, three and two. In yesterday's doubleheader here, we saw a lot of deep counts. Certainly in the first game, Italy versus Canada. And then in the Mexico US game, same thing you said. I think that speaks to the whole edict, Jim, that you hear players talk about it a lot too. Here in mid March, early March, if you will, the hitting is ahead of the pitching in the minds of many. I think the pitchers that knew that they were going to pitch in the World Baseball Classic certainly had to begin their throwing programs earlier so that they would be in condition to throw in this case as a starter 65 pitches. There's a base hit for Eduardo Arredondo. Boy was he a real pain yesterday for Team USA three for five on base all night scored a couple of runs. And he's picking up right where he left off less than 24 hours ago. I see him in the box and uh, move his feet around. It, it, 
He's like a Mexican version of Mickey Rivers. You know, he slaps it the other way. He's got good speed, hits it on the run, and picks up his fourth hit in the last two days. Here is Ramiro Pena now, and get a chance to see if there's any conversation between these two after the takeout slide in the top of the first. That is Pena digging in with Chris Robinson right behind him. No language barrier here because in addition to English I'm told that Chris Robinson also speaks Canadian. <laughs> one out of Romero Feint yet. Breaking balls in for a strike. Yeah, back to your point about the hitters being ahead of the pitchers. I, I think that's what at least in Team USA's case Joe Torre made sure he contacted all the players. And, uh, if pitchers knew that, at least if I were on that staff, I would I would make sure I started throwing in mid-January so I was ready to throw the allotment of pitches. Pena pops it up into foul territory. Hoping for a play was Taylor Green, but it's into the Mexico dugout. You know, years ago in spring training, uh, they didn't have the off-season. Conditioning programs. There's a nice effort by Taylor Green. Just out of reach. Edgar Gonzalez got a nice whiff of Taylor Green on his way past him. You know, players worked in the offseason and they didn't get a chance to throw and work out. That's different today. So players come to spring training in much better condition than they did years ago. Ball and two strikes. The count to Ramiro Pena. Switch hitting ex Yankee middle infielder. With a runner aboard, nobody out, just underway in the bottom half of the first. Whit wanted to see a starting pitcher you get a four run spot on the board you want to go right out there go after him and get your team back in the dugout and uh, LaRue is giving uh, Mexico a little hope here in the first inning with some deep counts and already a base runner at first. It's another deep count this one goes full three balls and two strikes to Arredondo. See if Arredondo's running on three and two. He stays put. And you could hear the crowd in the background. A very, very vocal crowd last night, supportive of Team Mexico, and they've shown up nicely today for a 12:30 start. Good support for the Mexican team. Back to back full counts. And this one results in a strikeout, one away in the first. And we welcome those of you who just got through watching the Dominican Republic's win over Spain to Phoenix, Arizona. Pool D action underway here at Chase Field along with Jim Cotton, Sam Ryan, Matt Vaskersian. Yes, we're only in the bottom half of the first. Canada with an early 4-0 lead. Five straight hits against Mexican right-hander Marco Estrada has given Team Canada with their backs up against the wall today an early advantage. However, Chris LaRue, the Montreal born 28 year old right hander, has already thrown over a dozen pitches in recording an out and allowing a leadoff base hit. He faces Luis Cruz now with Eduardo Arredondo aboard and one away. Big picture stuff here. Canada has a chance to control the zone destiny and there's a base hit for Louis Cruz Arredondo to the next station and here comes Team Mexico.
So what other support will bring you up to speed as to what's on the line this afternoon? For Canada, yes, they have a chance to control their own destiny. That's the good news. Should they beat Mexico and then beat Team USA tomorrow afternoon? However, this is also an elimination game that they're playing in right now. A loss and Team Canada bows out in the first round. As far as Team Mexico, this is their final matchup in Pool D. They lost to Italy on Thursday, beat Team USA last night, meaning they advance with a win this afternoon and a U.S. loss tonight against Italy. However, Mexico's done should they lose this afternoon and the U.S. beat Italy tonight. Almost a flip-flop, if you will. And yes, there are tiebreaker scenarios that get rather complicated. We'll get into those should we need to a little bit later on. But know this, Canada needs to win to stick around. One ball and one strike to Adrian Gonzalez, one of the heroes yesterday for Team Mexico in their big win over the U.S. Arredondo and Cruz aboard. Gonzalez bounces it to first. Joey Votto's throw is wide of the bag. Arredondo comes in to score, and Mexico's on the board on the throwing error by Joey Votto. Wow, huge error for Team Canada. Nice pivot, and actually, Shortstop could have come off the bag on that play and at least saved the wild throw. Couldn't have gotten the out, but he tried to play like a first baseman and couldn't couldn't reach the ball. Kale Orge. He almost have to come off the bag there and catch the ball, and they'd ended up with the bases loaded and one out. Instead, one run comes in. Now they have first and second and one out. Ten-year Major League veteran Jorge Cantu now. He had a couple of hits last night. A costly error by Joey Votto. Meanwhile, Chris LaRue really struggling with command early on. Yeah, not many uh, pitchers counts. Going back to that play by Votto, uh, covering the Yankees for years, I thought one of the best that I'd ever seen at making that 3-6-3 three, three double play as a, as a right-hander was Tino Martinez for the Yankees. Votto won a gold glove with the Reds back in 2011. Still regarded as being among the better defensive first baseman in the National League. Only one away here in the bottom half of the first. We'll get into some of the themes this afternoon, and they have emerged rather quickly. That's a foul ball. And I guess you can say this, Jim, about the fate for both of these teams. If not for the entire pool D it really revolves around pitching Canada's staff really struggled yesterday gave up 14 runs to Italy Mexico staff today a bit shorthanded. Yes they are I, I wouldn't think Ernie Witt would wait too long even with a, uh, a four to one lead to begin to get somebody ready. It's a big fastball waved at and missed and the, the point Matt made about Mexican pitching and we we have to talk so much about pitch counts and innings restrictions because that's what happens in the World Baseball Classic. Out of the 14 pitchers on Mexico's staff, seven are not eligible to pitch today. Four of the seven pitchers down the bullpen for Mexico, four of the six are lefties. But with Canada's left hand lineup, you say that's an advantage, but they don't have the experience that a lot of big league lefties do. Estrada threw 23 pitches in the first inning. Uh, we talked about that. It could be the key for Canada is to get him out of there's the unavailable pitchers that have all done a good job for Rick Renteria the first two games particularly last night started by uh, Giovanni Garat Gallardo and the closer Sergio Romo. Yeah that's really the class of the group that's unavailable today for Mexico. And on the other side of the pitching ledger, Chris LaRue is already 24 pitches into his afternoon. Just to refresh, first round pitch count, nobody can go past 65. 
So once again, as was the case yesterday, Canada's bullpen, perhaps early and often. And that's out number two. Italy is setting the pole in Pool D. They had to come from behind win over Mexico Thursday at Salt River Fields. The big mercy rule win over Canada yesterday right here. Mexico beat Team USA yesterday. And Canada once again looking to win their first in Pool D. This is an elimination game for the Canadians this afternoon. Here's 37 year old ex Dodger, ex Yankee Kareem Garcia. The 10 year veteran was one for four yesterday with a double in Mexico's opening win. You know, given the way Canada's bullpen fared yesterday, Jim. Their staff allowing seven two out RBIs. And then when you talk about the four nothing lead that Ernie Wood had for Chris LaRue today. This is absolutely worst case scenario for the Canadians. Garcia with a high drive to deep center field. Gillies back at the wall to make the catch and retire the side. Could have been worse for Team Canada. Mexico leaves a pair at the end of just one inning. It's already four to one Canada. This presentation of the World Baseball Classic is brought to you by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. And by Under Armour, where will and innovation come together, and Chevrolet find new roads. With Jim Cotton, Sam Ryan, Matt Vaskersian back in Phoenix. Team Canada on top of Team Mexico, 4 to 1 as we start the second inning play. Pete Orr, Kale Orge, and top of the order, Tyson Gillies against Marco Estrada, who was knocked around in the first. Pete Orr trying to continue that damage. That's into the left field corner. Playable for Edgar Gonzalez, and there's one away. Well, just to restate the big picture here for Team Canada, this is an elimination game. They lose, they're done. If they win, then tomorrow's matchup with Team USA means everything. They have a chance to control their own fate with a couple of wins. They go away with a loss against Mexico today. I would think that's the challenge as a player in this format is to you start looking at the different uh, possibilities, and you really have to just take care of the business at hand. And I guess that you'd say that's an advantage for Canada, even though they had a bad day yesterday. They win two games, they advance, and they can just take it. Uh, the old one game at a time and worry about uh, today and they're off to a good start. Here's Kayla Orr swinging at the first pitch and sending a high fly ball in the center. Arredondo makes the catch for out number two. That's a little advantage for Mexico this inning because uh, not many pitches to get the first two outs and their goal is to try to get Estrada out of there quickly. Center field. Canada's starting lineup brought to you by Subway. Philly property Tyson Gillies leads things off. Taylor Green of the Brewers bats number two. Votto and Morno back to back league MVPs in Major League Baseball bat two, three and four. Michael Saunders, Chris Robinson converted pitcher out of Lowen. And then you just saw Pete Orr and Kale Orge. A lot of left hand thump. And in fact, Canada lining up the same way one through nine for Ernie Witt that they did yesterday in their 14 to four loss to Team Italy. Here is Tyson Gillies now. Marco Estrada trying to calm it down. He gave up five straight hits in the first and then led to the four runs. Turn the page on a much more efficient inning here in the second so far, and top of the leadoff hitter Owen two. And on the other side, gum on the shoe of Chris LaRue. Gum shoe. Yeah, we're not talking about his being a private eye either. <laughs> a 
ball and two strikes to Tyson Gillies. First of two from Phoenix today. Later on tonight, Team USA against Italy. Italy should they have been the uh, the darling of the dance in Pool D. Two and zero, oh, and in an absolutely terrific position to go farther than they've ever gone in World Baseball Classic play. Two two to Gillies, and it's three and two now. Extra pressure on Ryan Vogel's song because of USA losing, but nothing new to him is, uh, as well as he performed in the postseason last year. And the payoff pitch gets Gillies looking. First strike out of the day for Marco Estrada. He comes back with a nine pitch, one, two, three, top of the second. We didn't have a chance to post Mexico's lineup. This is how Rick Renneria aligns Team Mexico. Their lineup presented by Subway Eduardo Arredondo was a Mexican League stolen base leader last year. He's followed by Ramiro Peña, Luis Cruz, Adrian Gonzalez, and Jorge Cantu, two familiar names, four and five. Karim Garcia, Edgar Gonzalez, Adrian's older brother, Roberto Cota, and former Red Sox Gil Velasquez round things out. It is the bottom third of said order. Gonzalez, Cota, and Velasquez here against Chris LaRue, who threw a lot of pitches in the first. LaRue already approaching 30 pitches, that being his 29th, just an inning plus into the start. Ernie Witt in much better shape than Rick Renteria with his pitching staff. He has uh, plenty of guys available. Didn't have to. Use as many, and then of course there's the the rules as to how many pitches you've thrown determine whether you can pitch back to back days. So he's got plenty of arms available. Chris LaRue was heavily scouted out of high school in Montreal. After being drafted and then going to college, going to Winthrop University, he was redrafted by the Marlins. In June of 05 in the seventh round. Strikes out Edgar Gonzalez. Let's explain how he and Team Canada got there at one point, four nothing lead. The damage coming with one out in the first. Taylor Green single, Joey Votto single, Justin Bordo doubled in a run, one nothing Canadians. Michael Saunders would follow with a two run single. And then a fourth run scores. On a Chris Robinson base hit. Mexico has since gotten one of them back. Chris LaRue working with a three run lead here in the second. Here's Humberto Cota now. Cota did not start yesterday. He came on as a defensive replacement. Jose Felix got the nod behind the plate. Boy, and what a difference in uh, Chris LaRue. I mentioned he's he's working from the stretch, but he did start eight games, so he has been used as a starting pitcher. Uh, but obviously he feels more comfortable that way. But you know, it's typical for a starting pitcher in the first inning, get the feel of the mound. You're a little more tentative than now this inning. Looks like he's throwing with a lot more confidence. Back to back strikeouts and his tempo's a little quick. You know, the first inning he's feeling his way through. Now he's starting to pitch. He had his bag packed off in last year. You saw the note there that he was a waiver claim by the Pirates in 2010 and actually last year pitched at three different stops. Did get some time with the big league club last season. mentioned back to back strikeouts giving him a total of three so far and that's the number nine hitter Gil Velasquez. You know the Hall of Fame is uh, full of pitchers who. The expression was said get them earlier you don't get them that first inning is primarily uh, you know is usually an inning where there's a little more tension a little more adjustment going on oh. for a starting pitcher. <laughs> Last 
goods. A ball of two strikes. Well, you can see why he's heavily scouted with that uh, power motion. He's six six two and a quarter. Good breaking pitch. Live fastball. Down onto that Canadian bench. I don't think there's anybody shorter than six five, and there's very few freshly shaved faces down there. Everybody's looking out of that Berlin Olsen template down there. Right. I mean, you look into that dugout, and there's no mistaking them for the Italians or uh, Team Spain or anybody oh. else. That is Team Canada. They are looking the part. Lumberjacks. Lumberjacks, indeed. Mounties. We talked about how big that lineup is. That went off the glove of LaRue. Or smothers it, gets to his feet, and throws him out. Well, a day after everything went Italy's way, it's Canada flipping the script on Mexico so far this afternoon. Still leading four to one. Oh, and they get a call. Well, here's what we mean when we say everything's going Canada's way. Why? You know the umpires oh have to love that new technology we have with the high speed <laughs> cameras, don't you? Wow. That was clearly a botched call at first base. And I, I got to say, sometimes we talk on behalf of the umpires in Major League Baseball, we talk about the degree of difficulty for so many of these calls. That, that was not to be considered a particularly tough call. That's a pedestrian call to make if you're an umpire. And Kwang Nam Na from Korea was in the middle of some controversy yesterday as well. When he called a double a home run, and that was a call that needed to be replayed and then reversed. Canada catches a break due to his large east in the second inning this afternoon. Shouldn't say large east, that was just a blown call. Taylor Green, the batter, leading off the third. It's going to be Green, Vano, and Morno here against Marco Estrada. So both pitchers. Correcting things with scoreless second innings today. Yeah, good changeup by Estrada. Wow! Hot shot. Marco makes a play. You know his motion, similar to Gallardo yesterday, it puts him in good position. Pitchers fall off the mound uh, so much. You know, there's a big emphasis on power. They let everything go, and they're not in position. He was right there with the ball hit to his glove side, be able to snag it. Joey Votto now. He has singled and scored this afternoon. Slow breaking ball in for a strike. Marco Estrada was originally drafted by the Nationals back in 2005, a sixth round choice out of Long Beach State. Another good changeup. At the age of six, Marco moved from Mexico. He was born in Sonora, moved to Southern California. Had a great prep career, a good collegiate year, and then was drafted by the Nats. Eventually claimed by the Brewers off of waivers, and that's where he's been ever since. The last three seasons now as Brewer property. The one two to Votto. Members of the NL Central. Once the big league season begins, Joey Votto, four for 11 with a home run against Marco Estrada, but caught looking here. Good pitch right on the outside corner. Designated hitter, Justin Morneau. Actually, more, more than just the outside yeah. corner. That, that. Pitch had a lot of the plate. Here's Justin Morneau now. He doubled in a run back in the first. He 
you pointed out earlier if you're pitching against this lineup you want to keep those top two guys off base so that you can you got a choice if you fall behind Votto you don't have to pitch to him you don't have to challenge both Votto and Morno. But Estrada's in a nice groove right now I can challenge anybody. Estrada up to 43 pitches this afternoon so best case scenario for Rick Renneria for maybe five innings from his starter today and again Mexico's is a bullpen that is undermanned only seven available pitchers today as Team Mexico is now playing on its third straight day. Fans in the background wanted this pitch, but it was clearly inside. Here's the 2 1 home to Morneau. And there's a base hit in the left center field. Nice to see Justin Morneau back healthy again. Those great years he had with the Twins and missing all the time with the, with a concussion and a variety of ailments. And two great left hand hitters in that lineup. Or no, uh, right Joe Mauer right was on Saunders. Team USA, and the Twins have had difficulty keeping them both on the field. So with Borno aboard, here's Michael Saunders now. He delivered the two run single back in the first, then stole the base and scored. Saunders last year as a Seattle Mariner posted career highs virtually across the board in every offensive category. Figures in the outfield mix once again in Seattle this year. Although that's a, a lineup dynamic that's changed quite a bit from last year. Some veteran additions to that squad. Kendrys Morales, Mike Morse, Raul Labanez back to Seattle. That one's ripped into the corner. Michael Saunders two for two. Let's see if they try to score with more. No, they do not. As Tim Lieber puts the stop sign up, and with two away, Canada's in business with runners at second and third. Well, left hand hitters coming through for Canada today. Another pitch inside half. Catcher. Left handers like that. Pitch they can turn on. Morneau not blessed with speed. Has to be held up at third. But a good opportunity for Canada to expand that lead. We talked about best case scenario a moment ago. For Marco Estrada being four, maybe five, you're thinking four is probably the number at this point. He's up to 48 pitches now. And here's Chris Robinson. He delivered an RBI single in the first. to the first inning when Chris Robinson was trying to break up a double play this was after singling and driving in a run he came in hard and in some minds perhaps late on Romero Pena let's take another look at it it's a great turn by Pena see on this replay a late decision to slide and if in fact Mexico took issue this is not an opportunity for them to do anything about it no We'll see if that scenario at some point has a postscript today. I think it's a slide Frank Robinson be proud of. You know, there were always a couple guys in the league that middle infielders knew beware, and they got a little light on their feet. You'll see a parade of lefties coming out of that. Uh, Open for Team Mexico. Cesar Ramos, the first to warm up here in the third. Former first rounder. 
likely the next in for Rick Renneria and Fernando Valenzuela. And the one two. Popped him up. Kareem Garcia out and right. Instead, it's Romero Pena that takes care of them. two base runners who laid waste in the third. Middle of the inning, still 4 to 1 Canada. Dominican offensive juggernaut continues. We are back on an overcast, cool, drizzly afternoon in the Valley of the Sun? Question mark? Yeah. Valley of the Clouds. Is this really March in Arizona? I think every exhibition game scheduled yesterday in Arizona was close to That is true. A nice crowd with the roof closed here this afternoon. And this is uh, less than 24 hours after Team USA and Team Mexico played in front of 44,000 plus here. A big, robust, loud crowd last night. Much of the crowd celebrating Mexico's win. They even up their WBC record at 1 1 here in Pool D. Eduardo Arredondo leads off the home third. At least we can see outside today. They have the panels open out in the right center, left center field area. A little sun. Daylight in. This guy's fun to watch. He's a lot of energy in that batter's box. Played his whole career in Mexico. Can run, can hit. Field. Matty Alou type look there, running the pitch count up. Of Chris LaRue. Full count to him, three balls and two strikes. In addition to uh, the numbers for his career, you see last year's Mexican League stolen base leader popped him up. Tyson Gillies has it, and there's one away. You know, it's worth revisiting the storyline. We talked about it yesterday, but for folks who didn't watch our early coverage Friday, Tyson Gillies. Team Canada center fielder and Philadelphia Phillies property is hearing impaired. Has 30% in one ear, 50% in the other. And among the things he has to overcome is the inability to pick up the crack of the bat. Here's Ramiro Peña with one away. Made some fine running catches today. And from what you read and from what people say about Gilly's abilities, it really doesn't seem to bother him much. This was in the first inning. Moving to his left nicely, and then he gets Kareem Garcia. He's going back to make a good catch and set up to uh, grab a ball that looked for a moment like it may be over him. Take enough fly balls in batting practice and you, you learn to judge and almost tell where the pitch is and the way the hitter swings the bat help you get a jump on the ball. Toughest one is as a center fielder hitter takes a full swing and hits it right off the end of the bat. That's the toughest one to judge. There's the nice play that Gillies made off the bat of Kareem Garcia in the first inning. And a strike and a strike to Ramiro Pena to fill the count at three and two. You talked about Curtis Pride yesterday, a player with considerable big league time who also overcame a hearing impairment. It's a pop into the corner, corner of the infield that is for Taylor Green. Sam Ryan with a little bit more on Tyson Gillies. Yeah, I did speak to him before the game today. Spent some time with him. He's wearing these in-ear hearing aids, which he was just fitted for last year. He used to wear the ones that went over his ear. And he told me as a kid, he would get picked on a lot. So he really had no self-confidence. What he would do, he would take the hearing aids and flush them down the toilet because he didn't want to wear them, guys. And he said he really didn't start to come out of his shell because socially he felt awkward until he was about in the 11th grade. But now with the hearing aids, they're helping him a lot, although he can't hear the crack of the bat, as you mentioned, Matt. But he does 
say when he takes them out, sometimes his equilibrium is a little bit off and it affects his balance. He feels it sometimes when he's driving. So the hearing aids do help in other aspects. Wow, a terrific story of uh, someone overcoming what you'd guess at first glance, Jim, would be difficult playing pro sports. But he has not let it uh, stop, or, nor did Curtis Pride. Terrific young man Curtis Pride was and got a lot out of his baseball ability. Luis Cruz the batter now with two out and the base is empty. I think Curtis is coaching baseball somewhere. Seems to me I read that somewhere. I to spend some time with him and then play briefly for the Yankees. Adrian Gonzalez next for Team Mexico. And the 1 2 to Cruz. This is the uh, 1 2 Dodgers slash Mexico punch. A couple of players that are going to be just as important in LA this summer as they are for Team Mexico this spring. And two players at different ends of the pay grade. It's a wave and a miss. Cruz has a chance to advance on that ball, and he will do so, giving Adrian Gonzalez a chance to hit with a runner on. La selección mexicana de béisbol presenta a su cuarto bat. That is a potentially big wild pitch strikeout. Chris Robinson couldn't keep it in front of him. And that's what keeps the inning alive. Tried to backhand that one as a catcher. I know you'd love to be able to turn the thumbs outward, keep it in front of you. Chris not able to do that. And gives Gonzalez a chance here with two out. Gonzalez reached on a fielder's choice E3 back in the first. The play that led to Arredondo scoring Mexico's only run of the afternoon so far. And Gonzalez in front of LaRue here 2 0. Pitching coach Denny Boucher on the right, former Montreal Expo. LaRue's pitch count. Of notice that was number 60. Let's take you back to yesterday and Adrian Gonzalez against R.A. Dickey straightening out a knuckleball. Two run home run, part of a three RBI night. Look at the emotion. Yeah, he'll have the green light here. 3 0 curveball. That's how much they respect him. He's had a lot of success in this building from his days in the NL West as a Padre and now as a Dodger. No opponent has ever hit more here in this building against the Diamondbacks. And there's ball four. Andrew Albers is hot. And they're going to make the move. 62 pitches for LaRue. And it's going to be a left hander Andrew Albers against the right handed hitting Jorge Cantu. That is unless and I, I ask you this Jim I mean 65 is the limit. Is there a chance that Ernie Witt lets him stay out there and then mid count you make well, the change you can finish. You can finish the hitter you're facing to when you reach 65 and it is a right hand hitter. Okay. Put in perspective how really ineffective that is. It, in a normal game, uh, you would hope to throw 12 to 13 <laughs> pitches in an inning if you're pitching effectively. So you should be able to get through five innings. And Chris LaRue now, who had such a good second inning, has slipped back to uh, deep counts and missing the strike zone. Jorge Cantu fly to center in his first try today. And I've said before from watching him in his Tampa Bay days, uh, this guy is ready for anybody's fastball middle of the plate in. And he's ahead of the count like right now. On the ground is shortstop, and it all works out for Team Canada. 
Chris LeVu done after three. Leading four to one. 4-1 Canada go to the top of the fourth. Let's check out Estrada. Now there's a difference between just throwing strikes and having control or command of your pitches. You see the flashing yellow target is where you would like to throw that pitch. But instead in the strike zone Estrada. A few hitters pitches early on that enabled Canada to jump out to a quick 4 nothing lead and his afternoon is finished. He yields here in the fourth. Taking over on the mound for Team Mexico is former first rounder left hander Cesar Ramos. Now, the organization of the Tampa Bay Rays. Yeah, the Rays actually tried to get him before they traded for him with San Diego via the draft. Took him out of high school. Instead, Cesar decided to go to college, went to Long Beach State. Improved his draft stock. It was taken a few years later as a first rounder by San Diego, but eventually the Rays got their man when they acquired him via trade from San Diego. A deal that involved Jason Bartlett, among others. Had almost a full season with the Big League Rays in 2011. You saw his abbreviated line with the Big League Club last year. Made 17 appearances with Tampa Bay. Majority of his innings came at Triple A Durham in 2012. A ball and two strikes to Adam Lowen. Well, being a left hand pitcher in uh, Mexico has several. If your arm is sound and you have a reasonably good arm, you should be able to pick up a lot of good pitching knowledge with two left handers on Fernando Valenzuela, who you see with a clipboard. Teddy Aguera, former standout lefty with the Milwaukee Brewers, both possessed a great screwball. Full count, three balls and two strikes. Yeah, we had that that discussion yesterday. The, the fact that there's been a lot of pitchers that have come out of Mexico. And I don't know that you could find two more decorated or celebrated than Teo Higuera and Fernando Valenzuela. Been some good ones. Well, it was a treat to be able to be an active player in '81. And Fernando Mania ran rampant through the National League. And from into St. Louis, you could be assured of a sellout crowd wherever. He Whenever he was scheduled to pitch and uh, seeing Teddy Aguera in his heyday shut down the Yankees, he was pretty good at that. Lowen bounces into second for Ramiro Pena. And Ramos covering, there's one away. Fernando Mania, his first 11 seasons with the Dodgers, National League Rookie of the Year and Cy Young Award winner in 1981, six straight All Star appearances, a two time World Series champ in LA. And, and here's my big beef with the Hall of Fame and some of this voting stuff that we kick around every January. You'd be hard pressed to find a pitcher that's made a bigger impact on the game for his time than Fernando Valenzuela in the 80s. Yet he's never gotten more than 7% of the Hall of Fame vote for whatever reason. Maybe it's because of his overall record 173 and 153. A lot of the naysayers say barely a 500 record. There's a ground ball from Pete Orr and two quick out. An ERA in the middle of threes. You know, you hear people say, well, he didn't even win 200 games, let alone 250 or 300. But I, I dare you to find a guy who made a bigger impact on the game during his time than Fernando Valenzuela and there has to be a place in the Hall of Fame for someone like that. Well, you might have a good point. Of course Sandy Koufax won 166 games but it seems like he won all of them about four years. <laughs> it didn't take him long but you're right about Fernando but I think all of us as uh, former players and fans understand it's not our Hall of Fame it's the writers Hall of Fame. And they look at things through different eyes yeah. than we do. Not Here's only, uh, now. Excuse me, Matt. Not only uh, you know the game, but you know the country. 
of uh, Mexico what he what he did to attract fans there for the Dodgers and for all the baseball no doubt and still to this day because he works as a color broadcaster on Spanish radio for the Dodgers There's only one person attached to that franchise that gets a louder ovation and a bigger tip of the cap than Fernando and it's Vince Scully. But they make a moment to recognize Fernando whenever he's at the ballpark in L.A. doing a game. He stands up, he waves to the fans, and it's it's almost a papal wave. He is a folk hero there. One and two to Kale Orange. I like Ramos's uh, motion. You know, it's uh, it's very uncomplicated. Watch how quickly he gets the arm up out of the glove and into the throwing position. So even though he might not throw exceptionally hard with that kind of motion the ball gets on the hitter a little quicker and his fastball can be very effective it's around a 90 mile an hour range. And the big slow breaking ball catches Orge looking Cesar Ramos gets Canada in order in the fifth. Gets him in order in the fourth too. We're going to serenade you to break Kitty. Gypsy Kings. Eat your heart out. <laughs> Four to one, Canada. Canada goes to the bullpen as we welcome you back to Phoenix. It is Team Canada on top in what is an elimination game for them. Four to one over Team Mexico. Back with Sam Ryan and Jim Cott, Matt Vasquez, and Karim Garcia, the first to lead off against Canadian left-hander Andrew Albers. Decorated amateur career in Canada. Now property of the Minnesota Twins, scheduled to uh, be pitching AAA this year. We talked about the Hall of Fame a moment ago as it related to Fernando Valenzuela and the building in Cooperstown. Well, Andrew Albers has been inducted into the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame. It's a base hit from Kareem Garcia. And Albers is there by virtue of winning the gold medal at the Pan Am Games. Back in 2011. You win an amateur gold medal to put you in the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame. We talked about that before the game up in the booth here that when you see the emotion on some of the teams like from Mexico and Italy, and now you mentioned Albers being the Canadian Hall of Fame because of his amateur career. I know some of the players from the United States have played together in the Olympics, but. Because there's no major leagues in these other cities, a lot of these players on the international team have played together since they were teenagers. You know, they have really good amateur careers. It's a uh, oh, ball knuckle. Edgar Gonzalez dumps a base hit into left center field, and here comes Team Mexico with back-to-back -back singles to open their half of the fourth. Get that ball out toward left uh, center field, and it was knuckling on his way out to Gillies. Quick start for Mexico. Here in the fourth. Center of the plate down around the knees. Yeah, similar to the Ryder Cup. You know, the European Ryder Cup players seem to be so much closer because they've played together as a group coming up to that level. Same thing seems to be true a lot of teams in international baseball. Here's the catcher Humberto Cota now. I think Joey Votto mentioned that it was good to come and get back to some guys that he played with as teenagers. Yeah, one could understand how a major league superstar like Joey Votto would perhaps lose touch with some of those guys along the way, but it moving in different directions. Four year old retired catcher Humberto Cota being pinch hit for by Sebastian Valle. Mexico's had some opportunities in this one with runners in scoring position. They are 0 for 4.
Robinson took the bat into that one. Breaths. Picture says it all. King smile now. He got his breath back. There's a little bit lost in translation there because Sebastian Valle does not speak terrific English. But uh, as fellow members of the catching fraternity, I think only a glance is necessary. Another base hit. Three straight knocks for Team Mexico. Here comes Kareem Garcia. Throw to the plate. Is in time to get him. And Chris Robinson, moments after being knocked out by that pitch, is able to hang on. Kareem Garcia. Oh boy, bad decision by Mexico. Down three, chance to have the bases loaded, nobody out. Garcia not a speedy runner. What a great play by Robinson. You see Garcia looking back, it just bloops in. He's being waved home. No chance. And Robinson right there. Interesting with that collision, and it was unavoidable because of the throw was there, as even catchers. Ooh. Like St. Louis manager Mike Matheny, who was as tough as they come, are starting to realize the danger of home plate collisions and teach their catchers to catch it in front of the plate and make the sweep tag. It was unavoidable there. The throw was up the line. Robinson just did a great job of catching, holding on, and making the tag. And Garcia did the right thing. You don't want to slide feet first or head first into a catcher. You just try to bowl him over. Well, Robinson was not in a, a really great oh. defensive position, but he was able to roll his body just enough so to avoid really bad impact there. Here's Gil Velasquez now. Three straight singles, yet there's one away. And no runs in for Mexico. Velasquez looking for his first hit here at Chase Field. He was hitless yesterday. Grounded into a double play earlier this afternoon against Chris LaRue. Base coach Eber, I want to say Mike Ayanas, Spanish, but uh, boy, would he like to have that decision over again. Yeah, that ball was not hit particularly hard. Gillies was shallow in center, and Garcia really had no shot. Let's take another look at it as that one's fouled away. Yeah, what a job by Chris Robinson. See, right in the line, catch the ball, and then kind of turn his shoulder to give him at least a little protection and hang on to the ball. So uh, he's had a tough inning. Well, there's only one other catcher on Canada's roster, and John Suomi was a late ad. Smalls fouls that away rather to stay behind one and two. Again, Team Canada had the controversy a couple of weeks ago regarding Russell Martin's decision not to play. He wanted to play shortstop for Team Canada. And after it was decided that that was not going to happen, Russell Martin pulled out. That's when Suomi was added. And there were a lot of people who didn't care for the decision. Felt like Russell should have played and caught. Well, and I think in Russell's defense, he, uh, because of uh, the catching position and the toll it takes, he didn't want that kind of toll on his knees and his legs. But he thought he'd like to play for Canada, but play as a shortstop. Yeah. Yeah, certainly his prerogative. He signs a new two-year deal to go 
play in Pittsburgh. He wants to learn a new staff. Well, and that's you know always one of the topics of discussion in the World Baseball Classic. When is the best time to have it? Because your major league players are under obligation to teams that they've signed contracts with. The only perfect scenario, and it'll never happen, is you cancel the major league season for one year and you have a a real full blown tryout and pick the 28 best players, get them all ready, and then play the tournament. That'll never happen, obviously. Velasquez is working down full on three and two. Extra bases into the corner. Mexico will get on the board anyway. Edgar Gonzalez scores all the way to third is Sebastian Valle. And Gil Velasquez cashes in with an RBI double. a little of the pain. Albers tried to get the pitch inside. Velasquez turns on it. Out of the reach of Green. And that eases a little bit of the pain of the mistake waving Kareem Garcia in. And it makes it a 4-2 game with the tying runs in scoring position but still just one out. Canada's bullpen was knocked around to the tune of 12 runs yesterday by Team Italy. And as Jim mentions, without the decision that Iber Magiana has made to wave Karim Garcia home, this could be a whole lot worse. So back at the top of the order now, Speedy Eduardo Arredondo with runners at second and third, one in, only one away. Yeah, with a two-run lead, Canada will keep their infield back with the exception of third baseman Taylor Green. Mexico has a perfect hitter in the box. I mean, you, you can't play this guy one way. Swing and a drive to right. Saunders is back to make the catch in front of the wall. Tagging up at third to score is Valle. Two-third is Velasquez, and it's a one-run ball game. How impressive has Eduardo Arredondo been in the last couple of days? Well, that gives you an idea how, you know, in baseball intelligence. Now, he's a guy that's up there just poking it around. Now with a chance with a with a pretty good swing to take the lead or tie the game, he drives the right fielder to the warning track. Productive out. The Mexican fan base reinvigorated after two runs here in the fourth. Tying run aboard with two gone now for Romero Pena. Pena the switch hitter in from the right side now against the reliever Alberts. When we got here this morning, Jim, and, and you and I were both talking about it up here, the large advertising panels here at Chase Field were open. And the thought was, and we had it confirmed by the folks running the event, that those panels were going to be open for the game. They made a late decision to close the panels. There have been a couple of balls hit, including that ball Arredondo just struck, that might have told a different story if the panels were open and if you listened to Kurt Schilling. Kurt in his Diamondback days was among those that thought the ball traveled a whole lot better with the panels open. Common topic of conversation with going back to a Sky Dome, which is now Rogers Center, as to whether the ball carried better. Roof closed, roof open. Off the fist to ground ball for Fado. And he'll flip it to Albers to retire the side, not before Mexico can score a pair. We played just four complete. It's an elimination game for Canada. They're clinging to a one run lead. This presentation of the World Baseball Classic is brought to you by G.I. Joe Retaliation in theaters everywhere March 28th, rated PG-13. And by Expedia, with more travel options, whether you're looking for 
Whatever you're looking for, Expedia can help you find yours. And by speed stick power, don't sweat it, handle it. We handle some of Canada's national parks, including Banff National Park, the oldest in Canada. That's Wood Buffalo National Park, the largest in the country. Great outdoors, said John Candy. Tyson Gillies leads things off in Canada's half of the fifth. They have watched their lead shrink. Gillies sends a fly ball out to right center. Make him 0 for 6 here in round one. Well, even though they're shorthanded pitching wise uh, Mexico in pretty good shape with the lefties they have available and Ramos doing a good job right here. But first five hitters in Canada's lineup being left handed and seven of the nine. One out base is empty now for Taylor Green. Did you along the course of your minor league travels. Ever pitch for a Canadian installment? I did not. I got close pitching in Missoula, Montana, big sky country, going up to Kalispell and uh, played some exhibition games in Winnipeg. But other than uh, Toronto and Montreal, I got the uh, pleasure of seeing a lot of that uh, you know, Calgary and out in the, in the West, which uh, everybody talks about beautiful country for fishing and golf and sightseeing. But Banff in particular, despite the fact that there's only one major league team left up there, and I still think it's a shame that the Expos went away. Minor league baseball is very much alive in Canada with some of its own circuits independently play, and some of the longstanding major league relationships in cities like Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton. Well, we, we've talked about the, the purpose of the World Baseball Classic, not necessarily to identify the best team, because particularly in the USA case, and they, they have a quality all-star team, but it's impossible to get the best of the best together at one time. But the amateur programs in Canada and now uh, growing, as we talked to Mike Piazza in Italy, the Netherlands have a great program, and... Uh, that's what a lot of these young players want a chance to play some amateur baseball maybe get scouted get a college scholarship get an opportunity to play professionally. Taylor Green has a base hit turning into a nice afternoon for the young Brewer two for three here against Team Mexico. Got some beautiful aerial shots this afternoon. Made possible by MetLife's Snoopy 2, a blimp with a legacy in sports that's as rich as the images it captured. Put a leader in your lineup with MetLife. A big moment here for Cesar Ramos. His team has come back within one, and now he's faced with getting out to Vado and Morneau. Keep it a one run game. Joey Votto has singled and struck out today. <laughs> Slicing into the opposite corner and foul. See, that's an example of. Uh, of the motion of Cesar Ramos. He uh, he gets the ball out of his hand so quickly. In other words, his arm doesn't drag behind him. And his fastball is, say, 90 miles an hour. But because of that nice motion, compact motion, ball gets up in the throwing motion and in on the hands of a left-hand hitter quicker than left-handers that might throw 93 miles an hour with a little longer, slower motion. That's why sometimes the radar gun can be very deceptive. Matchups like this one for Joey Votto, lefty lefty, specifically, have not bothered him much over the years. Tough ball to lay off, but it does miss inside. Votto over the last three seasons, a 330 batter against right handers, 302 against southpaws. More than respectable. 
drive into center field. Arredondo gets over there to his right to put it away. And there are two down in the fifth. And another good pitch by Ramos. They consistently came in on the hands of Votto. And he got it in good spots. So two gone now. And with Green still the board, it'll be up to Justin Morneau. Well, the way this ballgame started out, with five of the first six Canadian batters reaching base and four of them scoring, you thought, oh my goodness. But Mexico staff has really picked up. They have retired 13 of the last 16 cents. Middle of the afternoon. Still a one run ball game. We send you back to the MLB Network studios now to check in with Lauren Shahadi. Canada's WBC life on the line this afternoon. A Mexico win today, and we say goodbye to Team Canada for four years. If Canada wins, then tomorrow's game with the U.S. of utmost urgency and much more important, certainly for the Canadians. U.S. playing later tonight to take on Team Italy. Here's Luis Cruz to start things in the home fifth. Cruz, Gonzalez, and Cantu for Mexico. Cruz is jammed and sends a little fly ball out to left for Adam Lowe and one away. Well, we'll see if Andrew Albers can turn things around the same way Chris LaRue was able to, and that is to say after a rocky first inning come back and throw the ball more effectively. Here's Adrian Gonzalez now. If it feels like having watched a couple of games with Mexico that Adrian Gonzalez is being pitched around it's probably because he is being pitched around to a degree six walks already. Albers going right after him. He's uh, a lot like Ramos, the Mexican pitcher right now. That he's got a nice, quick arm action. Jorge Cantu next. Adrian Gonzalez made some comments yesterday after Mexico's win over the U.S. That fit perfectly with the pictures that we saw. The huge smile on his face when he hit the two-run home run over R.A. Dickey. The Mexican baseball program is really important for Adrian Gonzalez. His father has played a, a big role in its development the past number of years, not to mention the fact that his father, David, played in it until he was nearly 50 years old. That big smile goes along with the comments that he made yesterday after the game, which talked about how happy he was, how much joy that home run gave him. The one two. Big strikeout for Albers, and there are two gone. Nice sequence. Good blend of fastballs and then took a lot off the breaking ball and got him to chase it. First K for Adrian Gonzalez on the curveball by Albers. Jorge Cantu now. Cantu was two for five yesterday. Hitless so far this afternoon. Last played in the big leagues back in 2011. Started last year as Angels property and then was released at the end of April. Trying to extend what was a 10 year big league career perhaps with another additional look via the World Baseball Classic. There's a pinch hitter on deck. And it's noteworthy 
because that's where Kareem Garcia hits. It's Luis Garcia that would bat next. And you wonder if there were any repercussions from the collision at the plate earlier. Could very well be. Took quite a blow from Chris Robinson. Cantus chops it on the ground to the shortstop hole for Orge. And it's a 1 2 3 fifth for Albert. Plate five complete. It's still 4 3 Canada. To the sixth inning with Ernie Witt and Team Canada on top by a run. And again, the ramifications of this game this afternoon a Canada loss, and they are done. They can advance with a win here today and then a win tomorrow in what will be the Pool D finale against the U.S. They can control their own fate, but none of this is going to matter should they not be able to get past Mexico this afternoon. On top by a run as we head to the sixth. Michael Saunders has had a terrific night, day so far. As he is two for two. For Team Mexico, there's some complicated tiebreaker scenarios for them. But simply stated, they can advance with a win here and a U.S. loss tonight. And if you flip those scenarios, Mexico is eliminated. How about Michael Saunders, three for three today? In the second with a leadoff double. Good base runner too, Michael Saunders. Right out of the box, he gets into full speed in a hurry. There's a new right fielder in the game for Team Mexico, Luis Garcia. He began his baseball career some 15 years ago as a pitcher. And if you thought that. Uh, Mexico was shorthanded in terms of outfielders earlier, which they were. They are really shorthanded now. Chris Robinson bunting. That gets Saunders to third with one away. Mexico had really only two true outfielders on its roster. Karim Garcia, one of them. Yes, 37 year old Karim Garcia. Left fielder. Who is done for the day, and we're not sure if it's as a result of the collision with Chris Robinson or not. We assume that it is based on the conversation here. Edgar Gonzalez is in left. He's an infielder, and Luis Garcia is a first baseman. He takes over for Kareem Garcia after this collision, we assume, a couple of innings ago. Here's Adam Lowen now. Mexico brings the infield in with one away and a runner at third. Belichick's strategy going on in that regard, or if in fact that is the case. We'll learn a little bit more, I'm sure, after the game's over tonight. Lowen lays off, and it's now three balls and no strikes. Four pitches. Teddy Higuera is going to come out and pay a visit. All right, uh, Mexico can do here. Sixth inning now that the uh, Lowen has been walked. Play second baseman, shortstop at double play depth. Try to get the conventional double play to get out of the inning. Pete Orr will be the batter. The left-handed hitting middle infielder 0 for 2 today. 
Four. Again, this is a list of the unavailable pitchers for Team Mexico and some of their best bullets out of the bullpen unable to be used. But I underestimated uh, some of the bullpen pitchers they might have because uh, Ramos has been very effective here. Runs that fastball in on the lefties quite nicely. Runners at the corners now for Pete Orr. Saunders started the inning with a double. He was sacrificed to third. Low in his walk. And speaking of the sacrifice, Jim, that has been a weapon of choice throughout this World Baseball Classic, not just here in Pool D in Phoenix, but in all the first round matchups. Entering play today in 20 World Baseball Classic games. There had been 21 home runs, but 25 sack bunts. And a lot of that is teams that try to add on, pad their leads by manufacturing an extra run because of the run differential factor and a tiebreaker. And there's a base hit for Orr. It brings in Saunders and makes it a 5 3 candidate lead. Coming into third is cut off. And Pete Orr cashes in. Got that pitch a little high, Ramos did, and shortstop. Pete Orr centered it, centered it up just out of the reach of Pena. Nice base running by Adam Lowen. Good reaction immediately made the turn at second and got into third base once again runners at the corners with just one out. Much more satisfying start to this ball game for Canada City coach Larry Walker three for 13 yesterday with runners in scoring position four for five so far today. Here's Kale Orch now. understand it after they were mercy ruled yesterday Jim there is much more life much more spring in the step of that Canada dugout today low in at third or the runner at first with the run in and one away one and one We talked about yesterday from Canadian baseball royalty, if you will. Son of Garth, nephew, then of course of Dane. Their tremendous big league bloodlines. I tell you, if you're from Canada and you play with the Expos, the Blue Jays. The Expos not being a choice anymore, but you know what I mean there. Put you in a pretty good place. Danny Boucher, the Canadian pitching coach, I mean, you could list those players on a couple of hands, but all of them are held in very high regard. Big swing and a miss by Kale Orange. Yeah, swings a little long, I'm sure, to move up the ladder and get to the big leagues. Hitters, uh, hitting coaches will work with Kale on. Shortening up that swing. Well, baseball fans may not remember the uh, ugly strike back in 1994. We'd like to not remember it, but it did happen, and the World Series was canceled. Maybe the best team in baseball that year were the Montreal Expos. Marquise Grissom, Delano DeShields, Ken Hill, just to name a few. Yeah, they were they were all primed. A big swing and a miss by Kale Orr, and there are two away. Rob Ducey, Ontario native. John Wetland. John Wetland. Vince Horseman from Halifax, Nova Scotia. Wow. And the left hander, Paul Spolgeric. Yes. We'll talk a little bit more about the Canada staff as we continue. A change on the mound for Team Mexico, however, as Cesar Ramos is gone here in the sixth. 
the big sweat Dennis Reyes taking over on the mound for Team Mexico 15 seasons in the big leagues and as is the case for so many players on this roster including now, Edgar and Adrian Gonzalez the Mexican Tyson League Elise. so important to someone like Dennis Reyes who in fact played in a Mexican League all star game alongside his father when he was 15 years old he pitched his dad played first base. That explains in part why Dennis Reyes is still out there despite not being not having pitched in the big leagues in a couple of years. Tyson Gillies the batter runners at the corners and two gone. Yesterday, Jim, we were talking about legendary Mexican scout Mike Brito having discovered Fernando Valenzuela, Kareem Garcia, and put this man on his list as well. Dennis Reyes was discovered by the great Mike Brito as well. One and oh. You asked Dennis about his nickname. Hey, why did they call you the Big Sweat? It's because I sweat a lot. <laughs> Logical. <laughs> <laughs> and a strike to make it one and one. As a kid, Dennis Reyes was a right handed pitcher. And as the story goes, rolling around with his uncle, wrestling as a youngster. He broke his clavicle on his right side. Made the switch to doing everything left handed including throwing a baseball as a little guy. Making it a little easier is the fact that his right leg is over an inch shorter than his left. I think many of us have a little discrepancy length of one leg to the next but for Dennis it's rather exaggerated so it's it's just made it easier for him to throw with his left arm. Three and one. Tyson Gillies looking for his first hit here in round one. Popped him up in the infield. Gillies will remain hitless. One in the Canada sixth. Big sweat shuts the door. 5 3 Canada. Well the first game in Diamondbacks history and it was played right here in this ballpark they called it bank one back in 1998 it was between the Rockies and Diamondbacks and two of the players in that game are here this afternoon Larry Walker Canada's hitting coach played right field and hit number three for Don Baylor and Kareem Garcia played right field and actually had a nice afternoon in that inaugural contest here for the Rockies back in 1998 Kareem Garcia would have led off here in the sixth. But he was replaced by Luis Garcia, who will lead off in his stead. Let's take you back to 98. Grim Garcia was selected by the Diamondbacks in the expansion draft off the Dodgers roster. And he hit the team's second ever home run, a meaningless shot in the ninth. His replacement, Luis Garcia, has singled to open the sixth inning here today. Good. Looking at some of the names on that original Arizona Diamondbacks squad. Travis Lee. The late Dale Daryl Kyle. Speaking of amateur baseball. Andy Bennis, a uh, big part of the 1988 yep. Olympic team in Seoul, Korea. Edgar Gonzalez takes the first pitch into the opposite corner foul. We were wondering aloud when Luis Garcia emerged in the on deck circle to pinch hit for Kareem Garcia if in fact there was an injury. 
because we saw Kareem Garcia in that collision with Chris Robinson. There was an initial word from the clubhouse that said that was not the case, but Sam Ryan has the latest on what's happening with Kareem Garcia. Yeah, I heard from Team Mexico that he is a little sore from the collision that was in the bottom of the fourth with Chris Robinson, Matt and Jim, but that should there be any additional games, should Mexico advance, they don't anticipate him missing any time, just that he's a little sore from the collision. Got it, and that makes sense because this is the third and final game here in round one for Mexico win or lose they're done playing until if they get to Miami here was the collision. Kareem Garcia going in hard in the fourth. He moved as a precaution an inning and a half later. Ball and two strikes to Edgar Gonzalez. You know you look around the ballpark here now Chase Field as it's been for some years after they called it uh, Bank One Ballpark Tristan Magnuson up in the bullpen for Canada. There is no indication of the original teal and purple color scheme. It's all that Sedona red that's the official shade of red that they wear I guess that yeah the Louis Gonzalez retired number there's oh, OK I get it. I get it. There is some. Okay. <laughs> Sorry you brought it up. On yeah. That. <laughs> well, I, you know I'm not sitting in front of a monitor with. Yeah. 40 cameras. <laughs> I think I'll just lay out. Two balls and two strikes to count to Edgar Gonzalez. Thank you. With the Sedona red and black. Gear, you got to market that gear. That's right. Change colors every now and then, a couple different caps. Swung on a miss, the foul tip hung on to. Edgar Gonzalez, a strikeout victim, and there's one away for Albers in the sixth. Minnesota Twins have to be pleased to have uh, Andrew Albers in their farm system. Nice aggressive approach. I mean, he's not backing off. You saw the way he went at Adrian Gonzalez and struck him out. And a nice strike out there with a fastball up and in to get Adrian's older brother. Here's Sebastian Valle now. Valle singled as a pinch hitter back in the fourth when he batted for catcher Roberto Cota. He stuck around behind the plate. Philadelphia Phillies property. One of a number of players in this game that can claim that. He's actually found him playing in an international tournament with a Mexican club team. Another good thing about Albert, you see that uh, motion from the stretch. He kind of sits down on that back leg, which enables him to unload the ball home a little faster, hold the runner. Wow. Good stuff. Got a nice look in his eye, too. <laughs> You know he's not intimidated by anybody. Here it is. Hit it if you can. And the important innings for Canada. They've uh, stalled after that four run first. Tacked on one to make it five three. So these next couple uh, innings for Albers very important. And uh, like a starter, he's able to go 65 pitches. Talked about his amateur career. Saskatchewan Male Athlete of the Year. In 2011. What does that sound like? A line from Slapshot. <laughs> <laughs> says here you're from Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. Right. Yeah, Andrew Albers has really turned the corner after a rocky start to this relief appearance. He gave up four straight hits and a couple of runs. It was a base hit by Gil Velasquez. 
So Velasquez after starting 0 for 5 here at Chase Field has base hits in each of his last two plate appearances. And now it's the pesky leadoff hitter Eduardo Arredondo. Attention ladies and gentlemen. Team Canada pitcher Andrew Albers is approaching 20 pitches of the 65 pitch limit. You see last time men on second and third. One out he drove it to the track and right. But he's so hard to play. They play him shallow and center pretty well straight away because you know he's apt to just take the pitch outside poke it down the left field line. He really is the epitome of a hitter using the entire field. Garcia and Velasquez aboard. You mentioned it yesterday during our telecast Jim that when we met with Rick Renneria yesterday and we asked him hey who's the best player that you have on your roster that folks haven't heard of who's the best player you have that plays only in Mexico. He hesitated he mentioned Eduardo Arredondo by name and then kind of backtracked and said just you got just watch everybody and you tell me what you think. Well we know now what he was intimating. Arredondo has been a lot of fun to watch. I think he wonders if he if he hit the catch. Is he intending catcher's interference? I believe that's his claim. Yeah. You know he waited till the last minute and almost tried to poke the ball out of the catcher's glove and hit it down the third baseline. And I think there he's saying he hit the catcher's glove. Oh, and he, oh, he clearly did. Absolutely correct. Well, we have had some really terrific looks at some of these contested calls here. And Arredondo's claim is a good one. Yeah, did I see Brian Gorman, the home plate umpire, say you cannot ask for help on that? Yeah, I don't know. Lazy fly ball out to left, and with that, Albers gets out of the inning. A couple of base hits left stranded. The plate six complete, headed to the back third, Canada by two. Jim Cott, Sam Ryan, Matt Vaskersian. We're going to take a break after this one's over. We're going to watch Puerto Rico and uh, and Venezuela along with you, and then we'll be back here live for Team USA and Italy later on tonight. Let's see if that run can continue for the Italians. Here's Taylor Green to lead things off for Team Canada, up by two. This is an elimination game for Canada. If they lose to Mexico, should this two run lead not hold, they are done for the 2013 World Baseball Classic. However, Ernie Witt knows that a win today means a win tomorrow, and they're moving on to Miami. One ball and one strike to count to Taylor Green. Two and one now. Green's had a nice afternoon, a couple of singles tonight. Dennis Ray is continuing in relief. Came on to record the final out in the sixth inning. I was of the mind that it would be a one and out for the big sweat. But again, with the Mexico bullpen a bit shorthanded, more is being asked of Reyes, and especially when you consider three straight left-handed hitters in the seventh, it makes perfect sense. Full count. Yeah, what he'd like to do is face those. Next two left hand hitters with nobody on base. And there is ball four, leadoff hitter aboard in the seventh. Exclusive views of today's game are provided by the MetLife Blimp Snoopy 2. For more exclusive views of the 2013 World Baseball Classic, Follow the MetLife Blimp on Instagram and on Twitter at MetLife Blimp.
Joey Votto's one for three this afternoon, one for five so far in the tournament. Yeah. Well, each of Joey's last two plate appearances this afternoon have come against Southpaws. Cesar Ramos got him to fly out back in the fifth. We talked about the discrepancy in batting average for Joey right versus left. About 20 points lower for his career but still a more than respectable 304 lifetime batter against right lefties. Spend a lot of time in spring training, which is where we are for the big league teams on plays like that with drills, shift their body, keep the ball in front of them. Ball and two strikes. They get charged with pass balls. If they miss a ball, there ought to be a, a save category for catchers because it's plays like Valle just made that kept the base runner at first base. Taylor Green from advancing in the scoring position. Justin Bordo next. Oh. And it's two balls and two strikes. Well, despite Dennis Ray is not pitching in the big leagues for a couple of years, there have been previous meetings between these two. Votto three of seven against his adversary. For the moment. And yeah, the pitching pattern would tell me that uh, where Votto's done his damage is if Reyes tries to come inside because he really kept that ball near the outside corner. Full count now, three and two. Chance Taylor Green's running here? I wouldn't think so. Don't want to run into a strikeout throw out situation. Green stays put indeed, and it's a ground ball to the right side of the infield. Hang has got it. Votto retired. And Green moves into scoring position now with one away. A bit of a frustrating experience for Joey so far the last couple of days. Just one for six with a single. It, it's almost as though when he decided to play, everybody looked at Joey as if to say, well, this guy's going to lead us. Despite what he might say to the contrary, there has to be a little bit of pressure there, even for a former National League MVP. Certainly. I mean, he's uh, he's got plenty of support over there with other with another MVP, the guy in the batter's box right now. Here is Justin Morneau now. He doubled in a run back in the first two for three this afternoon. Take Team USA as an example. You, you cannot accurately say of any one or two players on the American roster that they are the two best players in their country. You can't say that. You might be able to say that about Votto and Morno. Correct. Which leads to the uh, the aforementioned pressure. One and one. As is the case with Adrian Gonzalez in Mexico. A little bigger talent pool in the USA. Michael Saunders has been the hottest Canadian hitter this afternoon. He waits on deck behind Morgo. Two balls and a strike. Saunders is three for three.
There's nobody up in the Team Mexico bullpen behind Dennis Reyes. This is his seventh inning. Morno smacks a 2 1 pitch into right center field. That's going to get past Luis Garcia and score Taylor Green. A three hit afternoon for Justin Morno. And it's a 6 to 3 Canada advantage. Pitch designed to be outside caught too much of the plate and out in right field uh, Luis Garcia more or less played that single into a double ran a little po uh, post pattern there instead of getting over and uh, cutting it off right away or taking a deeper route and cut it off he could have held more no to a single now Canada with another runner in scoring position just one out. Saunders, as we mentioned, three for three so far today. Yeah, he's really been impressive, not just the way he swings the bat, but his anticipation on the bases, the way he runs the bases, takes advantage, gets you the extra base. You know, he was on second base with the uh, ball out in front of the plate, short, wild pitch, and uh, advanced to third. Last at bat running hard right out of the box turned uh, what would be a single for a lot of players into a double. Between Morno Board and the man at the plate, Michael Saunders, that's four doubles. Well, they're <laughs> they're uh, they're going to make Valle. Ray is going to make Valle earn his keep. He's got him sliding outside on that breaking ball. It's missing by five or six feet. He's had a busy inning. Nice job. The 3 0. We talked about this earlier, Jim, the fact that Mexico does not have more than two true outfielders on its roster. And you, you mentioned how Luis Garcia kind of misplayed that extra base out there a moment ago. It's wild how the ball finds you. I mean, it happened to Edgar Gonzalez on Thursday, and that cost the game. It happens to Luis Garcia today, and now it's a full count three and two. And that expression Matt used is uh, ball players use it a lot. You get a player that's used to play in the infield. And or the outfield, for example, all of a sudden you say, well, let's put him at third base. Invariably, somebody will hit him a tough play there and expose him. From 3 0 to a full count, the payoff pitch home to Saunders misses low ball four. Runners at first and second now with one away. Catcher. Yeah, sure. Chris Robinson. A big opportunity here for Chris Robinson. Mostly left hand hitters up against Reyes, but the uh, base on balls is Teddy Garrett comes out of the dugout to talk with Reyes. They tacked on a run in the sixth, one in the seventh, and uh, you know, suddenly they can increase that lead to four or five, and Mexico just three at bats left to get back in it. Well, this is designed to buy a little time. Danny Rodriguez just got up in the bullpen. A reminder spring training coverage continues on MLB Network. Monday is a travel day. Between games here in Phoenix and games that begin in Miami on Tuesday. Plenty of live baseball on MLB Network coverage from the Cactus League. Here's Chris Robinson now. Right hander Jose Cobos, who pitched yesterday, has joined Danny Rodriguez in the Mexico bullpen. So Rick Renteria gets both sides going in relief. After Robinson, it's left handed hitters Lowen and Orr. And that one 
hits him. Yeah, Reyes just he can't find the strike zone. I don't know if he's lost if he doesn't have any confidence in challenging the hitters or just because of a lot of inactivity he's not sharp with his pitch. Remember he retired he didn't report to spring training with the Orioles and was released. And Rick Renteria now will I'm sure make a pitching change. Got him in the toe. Either that or it was a nice acting job. Oh, I don't know. Bring in the left hander. Yep. Rick Renneri wants the southpaw. He wants Danny Rodriguez for Adam Lowen. Bases are loaded to run in with one away. A pitching change, and we'll be right back. Daniel Rodriguez is the new pitcher. Canada counters with a right handed pinch hitter. Jimmy Van Ostrand bats. Base is loaded one away. Van Ostrand is Astros property. Well, it is college ball at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo along the central coast of California. An eighth round rap selection back in 2006. That's on the ground to third. Cruz to second. They do cut down the middleman, but a run scores. Mordo crosses the plate. Canada adds on again their second run of the inning. And it's now a 7 3 lead. Another close play at second, another late slide by Chris Robinson. Four. Check this out. High bounce again, the, the uh, field very firm here. Tried to make the tag, miss that. And then they just get Robinson at second, and he slides in late, well past the bag. Going to have a pinch runner at first. Rene Tassoni runs for Van Ostrand. As you take a look at the out at second base again in the late slide by Robinson. Yeah, not only late slide that time, but uh, pretty high with the spikes. Look closer now, look closer. So it's a Sony running at first, and now it's back to Pete Orr. Orr lines to first for Adrian Gonzalez to retire the side. Canada adds two more, however. Seventh inning stretch. It's Mexico, Mexico down by four. Let's bring up the speed on the score and Canada started early with four runs in the first against Marco Estrada one of the big blows Justin Morneau RBI knock Michael Saunders has been terrific he's got three hits drove in two in the first inning Chris Robinson made it four nothing with his base hit. in the fourth inning Mexico made a little noise Gil Velasquez doubled in a run then a sack fly made it a one run ball game Canada back at it again with a Pete or RBI single in the sixth and in the seventh hanging two more still. Tristan Magnuson is the new pitcher on the mound for Team Canada. He'll get Ramiro Pena to start things out. Pena, Cruz, and Adrian Gonzalez. Oh, and two the count to Ramiro Pena. Tristan Magnuson, a former number one draft choice. Supplemental pick as you see Rene Tassoni take over in left. Play out there. In place of Adam Lowen. Magnuson, a British Columbia native, chosen first in the 2007 supplemental round by the Blue Jays out of Louisville. Comes from a hockey bloodline and a rather distinguished one. Great Keith? uncle, the late Keith Magnuson. Wow. Be pretty hard to find a Canadian athlete that doesn't have some connection to a ho great hockey player. <laughs> That's probably true. But when your uh, when your great uncle amassed over 1,400 penalty minutes, I think that puts you in a different category. Pena bounces it to first. And with Magnuson covering, there's one away.
Well, we mentioned at the start of the game that the uh, disadvantage Mexico had in this one because they had to use their top quality relievers. Rick Renteria used a lot of them yesterday because he knew he had to win that game against the USA. Brought Sergio Romo again two days in a row. So the seven of his pitchers were not available. And now Canada's taken advantage of that in the last two innings by putting three runs on the board and getting that lead back up to four runs. Here's Luis Cruz now. He is singled and reached via a wild pitch strikeout. Chopper to third, a fine play by Taylor Green. Nice play. Got to make a decision there if you're Taylor Green. Once you retreat on that ball, you have no chance. So he just charged it right from the first step, said, I'll take my chances, and he came up with it. Brewers first base coach Garth Orridge was among those to tell Team Canada officials that, hey, you'll be fine at third base without Brett Lowry, at least defensively, with Taylor Green, and that has certainly proven correct. Red Lowry lost because of an injured rib on the shelf for three weeks. That certainly took a big bullet out of the chamber for Canada. But Green has played well defensively. Here's Adrian Gonzalez now with two gone. Three Canada. Well, perhaps a little bit more clarity as to the uh, the big picture here, with Canada opening up a seven to three lead for Team Canada. Should they not be able to hang on to this lead, they're done. If they go ahead and win, and if Team USA beats Italy tonight, that'll set up a winner-take-all scenario between Canada and the U.S. tomorrow afternoon as to who joins Italy in advancing to Miami next week. Italy's, uh, they're in good shape. They're going. 2-0 and right now. And there you see the scenario for Team Mexico. They have to come back and win this game. And hope that uh, Italy can beat the USA tonight. Now there is a third scenario. I hesitate to even go down that road, but given I've already put one foot in the water. <laughs> Kale Orge, by the way, with an 0 and 2 count. That is, if at the end of tomorrow, the U.S., Mexico, and Canada are all 1 and 2, as Orge is caught looking. And that's certainly not impossible to imagine. If they're all 1 and 2, then all the tiebreaker scenarios will take effect. It starts with head to head play and then it trickles down to a more complicated math formula which to abbreviate is basically runs differential. Then it also includes innings so it's not just a simple plus minus number. Tyson Gillies now still looking for his first hit. This is what we're talking about here. This is the three team tiebreaker formula. A number is derived. Runs scored over innings played on offense minus runs allowed over innings played on defense. It, it is runs differential but it takes into account a couple of more decimal points with innings played. Only scores from games between the tied teams will be used in the calculation. So you can take Italy and throw them out. There is a chance, based on what happens today and tomorrow, that the U.S., Mexico, and Canada all finish tied. And that tiebreaker scene would need to be used to figure out who joins Italy and moving on.
Two balls and a strike to Tyson Gillies. Danny Rodriguez entered last inning in relief of Dennis Reyes. Allowed an RBI single and then got Pete Orr to line out and end the inning. Back to back strikeouts for him here in the eighth. Good shot breaking ball fact his pitching line that we got to look at when he came in uh, well over a strikeout an inning. And a pretty good strikeout to walk ratio. Baye has been busy Taylor back there, three. boy. He, he has uh, been well schooled in how to block the low pitches, and it's paid off. Kept that one in front of him, strike three, and is able to make the throw to first base to retire Gillies. There's Taylor Green now, who, in addition to playing fine defensive baseball today, has added two singles and two runs scored. 0 and 1. and Venezuela coming up next on MLB Network and then Jim Sam and I are back for the U.S. and Italy right here from Phoenix later on this evening. Ryan Vogelsong on the mound for Team USA tonight and as MLB Network Director of Editorial Research Elliot Kalb has said on point. His whole career has been a world baseball classic. Velasquez backhands can't get it out of the glove and Taylor Green's aboard on an infield single. Well I got it hit great boy. First baseman. Nice play on the backhand side but off balance couldn't make the throw. Every time I see that play I think of Yankee great Derek Jeter. No one makes that play in baseball better than Derek Jeter because he has the ability to get over there and turn the glove over so he's got it palm up and make that very unorthodox off balance throw. But he seems to be able to do it time after time and has since he was a rookie. Don Zimmer first pointed that out to me. Here's Joey Votto now with a two out base runner report. Votto one for six so far in the tournament. It's a stray bird flying around here inside of Chase Field. And if I was a little bit more up on my uh, species. Orthonology is that what it is? Orthonology is that what it is? Bird watchers. Okay. Well, I'm not. I'm not one of those. I wish I was at this point because maybe I'd be able to identify the thing and tell you if it was good luck in either Canadian or Mexican culture. I just hope it's not a bat. Disturbing video of bats in college basketball games. Ornithology. Okay. Two balls and a strike to Votto. Good breaking ball that time. Italy and the U.S. coming up later tonight. That follows Puerto Rico and Venezuela. And again, if Canada wins, if they hang on and beat Mexico here, and then if the U.S. beats Italy tonight, and the U.S. is a heavy favorite tonight. And that'll set up a winner take all between Canada and the U.S. tomorrow afternoon to determine who goes to Miami along with Italy. The Italians in winning their first two games and then based on what else has happened in the bracket. They are guaranteed a spot to move on. Okay. 
Full count, three and two. You know, the four runs in the first that Canada scored, it did a lot to kind of take the Mexican contingency out of the ballpark today. I mean, they're here. They are waving flags and blowing horns and flashing their colors around. They have not had as much to get excited about today. There's ball four to Votto. Well, and this is what Larry Walker, their hitting coach, was talking about before the game that Canada had to do is get some men on base for the big thumpers and uh, more knows Justin come Morneau. through for him today and Saunders in the on deck circles done the same. Yeah, it's been that kind of day for Mexico since the first inning late night last night they used all their energy to cheer on their team against uh, USA. Canada took as Matt said the fans out of this game early on. Mexico climbed within one. And then Canada tacked on a few more and the lead is right back to four. Justin Morno has had a big afternoon. He's three for four. And wouldn't it be a, a wonderfully positive thing? If Justin Morneau kind of uses this World Baseball Classic performance as a, a jumping off point, if you will, to a resurgent comeback player of the year style 2013. There's another base hit for him this afternoon. Taylor Green will come around to score an insurance strike, and it's 8 to 3, Team Canada. Let's take you back to mid-season 2010 where it all started to go bad for Justin Morneau. Cool irony that it was in Canada, in Toronto, Twins and Blue Jays in the top of the eighth. After the concussion, the results dropped off dramatically. Justin had been a 286 career hitter. The power dissipated, as did his ability to take the field. Between 2010 and 2012, he played in only half of the Twins games. This was that fateful moment in 2010 double play ball on a Michael Kadire ground ball a concussion when John McDonald's knee hit him in the head. He was placed on the DL missed the remainder of the season and has not played a full season since. Well, he has been terrific this afternoon and in this World oh. Baseball Classic four hits today. The last of which has forced another move to Mexico's bullpen. Another pitching change, and we'll be right back. That overcast and haze just has not left the valley all afternoon. Unseasonably cool rain the last couple of days. It's kept the roof closed at Chase Field. We're inside. Team Canada is a couple of innings away from perhaps making tomorrow's showdown with the USA very meaningful indeed. Canada has added a run to their lead here in the eighth inning. And forced a pitching change as Arnold Leon takes over here in the eighth. Michael Saunders has been terrific this afternoon, a perfect four for four. Check that Saunders three for three with a base on balls. He's driven in a couple of runs, stolen a base, and scored two. and more no aboard. In fact, the, the two through five part of the Canada lineup today, a complete reversal from the long day they suffered yesterday. Two through five hitters have reached base 14 times and scored all eight of Team Canada's runs. Two and two. Another base. 
that's it for Michael Saunders. They're going to wave Votto around. Gonzalez's throw is cut off. They've got Mordo in a rundown. And that will retire the side. The run counts, however. Two insurance scores for Canada in the eighth. Well, we have spent a great deal of the telecast today, Jim, talking about Canada and this elimination game of theirs. So far, they have answered, despite that man's pants. 9 3 Canada. Meaning they've still got more than a puncher's chance to get to Miami for the next round of the tournament. What of Team Mexico? This is their final Pool D matchup. And should they fail to come back, they'll be 1 and 2. They'd still be alive, however. And what Mexico would be rooting for, as Jorge Cantu on a couple of hops sends it out to Peter Orr, Mexico would need the U.S. to lose tonight to Italy and then the U.S. to beat Canada tomorrow afternoon. That would set up a three-way tie for the runner-up in the bracket. Mexico, the U.S., and Canada would all be one and two, and that's when we'd go to the tiebreaker formulas. Which is why I think Adrian Gonzalez uh, told Sam Ryan last night they were happy about that win, but they pretty much knew that today was a must win game for them to move on. The percentage of those other things happening are not good for them. And Larry Walker got what he wanted today. You know, he said it's we got to get the table setters on. We can't have Votto and Morneau hitting with nobody on anymore. And today, that middle of the order. Particularly more and Michael Saunders uh, have, have really done the damage. Morno and Saunders eight for nine today. Four runs, six runs batted in, four doubles. They have been terrific. You know, before we got here, we were all kind of looking at this bracket and we were saying to ourselves, all right, you got the U.S., Mexico, Canada, Italy. Who between Mexico and Canada will join the U.S. in the next round? Yeah, right. Well, Italy's the team that's going to the next round. And the rest of it is kind of a crap's roll, if you will. I tell you, it's been, it's been impressive to see the teams that we don't know about a lot about. The Kingdom of the Netherlands, uh, they have a big game with Japan coming up, but they beat Cuba. Uh, Italy has been very impressive, particularly with their with their lineup up and down the lineup, and they've also gotten some pretty solid pitching. All day, all day. Luis Garcia grounds to Fedor. There are two away. We send you back to the MLB Network studios to check in with Scott Braun. Well, Matt, Venezuela and Puerto Rico is underway. Big Z on the mound. Carlos Zambrano sits down one, two, three in the order. Angel Pagan, Irving Falou, and right here, and Alex Rios ground out. If Puerto Rico wins, Venezuela would be eliminated from the World Baseball Classic. Back to you. Scott, thanks, and that would be a huge upset. Certainly, Venezuela was one of the pre-tournament favorites to get into the second round, if not all the way to San Francisco for the finals. Carlos Zambrano using the World Baseball Classic as an audition of sorts. One of the unsigned free agents who's still out there. Well, somebody else had a good World Baseball Classic, but his team is going home is uh, Chin Ming Wong. The Chinese tap Taipei, former uh, terrific pitcher for the New York Yankees till he had that base running incident down in Houston. He sidetracked his career. Just points up that uh, in all of the teams internationally involved in this tournament there's some big league talent spread around the world. Yeah Chin Min Wong I believe 12 scoreless innings it would be hard to imagine his not having a deal to pitch someplace in the next week or two. Edgar Gonzalez grounds a foul wide of third. I think he was uh, he was maybe second in the Cy Young Award voting uh, several years ago. That's how good a year he had. So like 19 and 5, 19 and 6. I don't have the exact numbers, but he had about as devastating a sinker. If somebody was looking for a ground ball pitcher, he was the guy you wanted. Ball four to Edgar Gonzalez.
Canada had to win today or else they were done. For Mexico, they didn't have to win. You can still get there with a loss, but it becomes very, very complicated, and Rick Renneria is going to need a lot of help. Again, for Mexico, should they fail to come back, they need the U.S. to lose to Italy tonight, and then for the U.S. to beat Canada tomorrow. They're not holding Edgar Gonzalez, so he takes second base. And it's nothing one to Sebastian Valle. big deal the last World Baseball Classic when the Dominicans were upset by Team Netherlands. If Brian Vogelsong and Team USA should go down to the hand of Luca Panarati and the Italians tonight you'd be talking about a Davy versus Goliath upset the likes of which this tournament has never seen. U.S. heavy heavy favorites tonight. Two strikes to Sebastian Valle. And a fly ball out to shallow right center. Tyson Gillies has got it. Nothing in the home half of the eighth. On to the ninth. Canada in control this afternoon. Inside Chase Field. Team Canada is an inning away for making things very interesting tomorrow. And how about Chris Robinson bunting against Arnold Leon and doing so for a base hit with a six run lead in the top of the night. Again, runs matter even with a big comfortable lead. Yeah, normally in a, in a let's say in a normal game during a, a major league season, you'd say that's really rubbing it in nine to three. But as you pointed out, with the possible tiebreakers, you tack on as many runs as you can because it increases your chances of being able to, be able to, uh, to win a tiebreaker situation. Well, and I'm sure that, that players throughout the tournament have been informed as such. Here's Rene Tassoni making his first plate appearance. A Toronto native and former Minnesota twin. Property going into 2013. Been a couple of stories tonight about teams drafting a player once and then maybe getting him via trade later on in that career. Rene Tassoni was actually drafted a couple of times by the Twins, and now there's a little chippiness going on. That uh, that might have to do with Robinson's late slides. Yeah, Robinson bunted for a base oh, hit yeah, before right, they could that, drill him. That might be it too, because uh, but maybe they don't understand. <laughs> maybe Leon doesn't understand the rules. That's not really bad baseball right now because uh, you got to score as many runs as you can. I thought it might have had something to do with his late slides, Robinson. Hey, wow! After the warning, Arnold Leon just drilled Rene Tassoni, and it's on. Benches oh, have cleared. That's you want not nothing good. to do with the hockey players. That's not good. There are people flying all around here right now. Coaches are trying to restore some order. Oh, I saw Alfredo Aceves go down. Oh, this is ugly. This is ugly. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness.
Perez wants a piece of somebody. Just a little dust up, folks. Yeah, totally uncalled for. And I mean, there were haymakers being thrown in that scrum, and Alfredo Aceves was on the bottom of a pile that just did not look good for he or the Red Sox or anybody involved with this event. Like this is like Padres Braves circa 1984, where it just seems to have no end. And finally, it's the coaching staffs from both teams that are able to restore order. It, a four-man umpiring crew has no chance no. when there's 60 guys in there. They had the help of the coaches in. My oh goodness and now the Canadian fans or the Canadian players. Yeah there's some Mexican fans fans of Team Mexico beyond the Canada dugout that are beginning to throw things at the players. Just like a scene from Slapshot now. Part in the hockey pun. Is that Dennis Boucher, the pitching coach? I think somebody threw something at Dennis Boucher. Umpires huddling around. It's amazing. In front uh, of the I mound, am. trying to assess the damage and uh, decide what to do. But but again, it was over the uh, the bud by Robinson, and we pointed out that. Uh, in the World Baseball Classic, even though teams have big leads with the potential tiebreaker, particularly with Team Canada getting beat by 10 runs yesterday, they want to add as many runs as they can. Well, I, I also think this, and there's being an announcement made now to immediate arrest and hefty fines. At minimum, charges will include reckless endangerment and disruption of a public event. The World Baseball Classic thanks you for your support and assistance. There was most certainly, as that announcement indicates, something was thrown from the stands into the Canada dugout. This is Tassoni getting dusted. A warning was issued by Brian Gorman, and then on the very next pitch, he gets drilled. Uh, you, you just I mean I don't even know how to assess the multiple ejections here. I think what they're worried about now this was again when it got ugly what they're worrying about now is is the fan or fans that threw something at Canada's dugout. You can see the debris that's Dennis Boucher getting hit in the head with a can or a bottle. Boy, I'll tell you, this this really got ugly fast. I don't know what the World Baseball Classics uh, policy is, you know, from their administrators, but they have a chance to look at all the video here and decide, you know, what to do. There's a Sebas right in the middle of it. Yeah, Sebas was, he got worn out. I think it's the frustration of uh, Team Mexico that, you know, it appears they're on the brink of elimination. Canada uh, trying to tack more and more runs onto their you know ledger. And, but here's what I think about this Jim and I hear your point about the bunt. I think that they wanted to get Chris Robinson two late takeout slides by Robinson today. 
Mexico wanted to get him, but he bunted for a base hit before they could drill him. Let's take you back to what happened in the first. Late slide here, and we documented that. And then in the fourth, we talked about this play, the collision at home plate. This was unavoidable contact as far as I was concerned. But Karim Garcia with a shoulder back to Robinson. Then in the ninth, this is Robinson bunting the first pitch of the at bat. If they were going to throw at somebody, it was him. But he got on base, so it was Rene Tassoni next that ended up wearing it. And before that, Chris Robinson, uh, two innings before that, slid into second base and made a really late slide. That was the uh, end of the inning. So he's been in the middle of some of that. And you might be right. He was the guy they wanted to take a shot at. You know there are some real ramifications if either one of these teams moves forward Jim because WCB WBC rules state that a suspended player may not be reinstated for the duration of the tournament. And we're just waiting to get word, official word, as to who has been ejected from the ball game. This, this might take a little while. Can you remember seeing something like this that didn't just uh, amount to a bunch of pushing and shoving and brother in law? I mean, this was. Well, it takes me back to uh, Campaneris throwing the bat at Lair and LeGrow, Oakland and Detroit. 72. Yeah. Uh, the Mariners and try to think of who they uh, is when I believe Mike Messina was injured and it might be Mariners and Orioles it had to be and of course yeah. the Red Sox Yankees with some rather infamous infamous encounters with uh, the likes of Bill Lee and Greg Nettles Armando Benitez versus the Yankees. Yeah the one. Uh, I remember one with the Orioles and the Yankees where Daryl Strawberry ended up over in the Orioles dugout in Yankee Stadium. But uh, I, I have no idea how this umpiring crew is going to be able to assess who's been thrown out because I mean there, there were some scary moments in that scrum where they weren't just paying attention to who was throwing punches they were trying to avoid being punched themselves. This all revolves around Chris Robinson. This was to Sony getting hit, and then Robinson was the runner at first. You kind of lose him in the pile here. Tyson Gillies took down Alfredo Aceves, and then Aceves went after him, and then Aceves, he got strangled by Adam Lowen. Oh my. That... Wow. Probably a seat that was a little too close for comfort for all this. Sam, what can you tell us? Yeah, right here in the Team Canada dugout, and everyone was still mulling about trying to figure out what was going on. Michael Saunders went up to Tyson Gillies and said, You took down a Sevis. They're all really talking about it, wanted to see what was going on as they're waiting for this to get sorted out, guys. All right, Sam, thanks, and we'll we'll try to figure out when there's an official announcement as to who's been ejected. That there has to have been multiple ejections from that. Can't imagine that it's just let's uh, finish the game type stuff. Jonathan Malo is a pinch hitter. Tim Smith pinch running. And Jose Cobos is the new pitcher. And we don't know if that's as a result of ejections or just 
substitutions. Well, Leon was an ejection, the pitcher, obviously, because before he hit to Sony, he was uh, both teams were warned, so he was ejected. I don't know who has been ejected along with them. Two balls and no strikes to Jonathan Ballo. This is what Sam was talking about a moment ago. This was a Seves. Tyson Gillies took him down, but I don't know what kind of move you call that. But then a Seves was not going to stop until he found him. Gosh. We're, we're now being told that in addition to Arnold Leone being ejected, Rene Tassoni was ejected. I don't know if I get that. Did Tassoni throw a punch? I mean, he got drilled in the back after being dusted twice. I guess for charging the mound, Probably. that's an automatic ejection. Probably. All right. It's ball four. And now that all the dust is settled, even Canada got uh, defeated by way of the mercy Shortstop. rule yesterday. Four. They're in position to win a game by the same way here in the ninth inning. With nobody out, the bases loaded. They can score four and make up that 10 run deficit they lost by. Here's Kale Orge now. of something like that still being in your mind. Yeah well there were there was a lot of combat down there usually in most of those things there are the two combatants and everybody else trying to make peace. We used to have some pretty good dust ups with the Pittsburgh Pirates. And Bruce Keeson was known to tie a bow tie on Mike Schmidt or Greg Lazinski and First guy I looked for was uh, Willie Stargell, Jim Bibby, and say, "How you going, guys?" <laughs> There's the uh, maybe the bottle floor that's being escorted from the ballpark. Three strikeouts, uh, Kale Orge, and a lot of that is the uh, the long swing he has. Not able to catch up with some of the fastballs. Still the ball in two strikes. Regards to the mercy rule here, Jim. Mexico still has to bat. I try. Right. It has to be the so bottom of the inning, doesn't it? In the bottom of the inning. Yeah, exactly. that was the That's difference right. yesterday. Yeah. They get a um, chance to hit. Yeah, and I was just getting ready to say another tack on another few, and this is over, and you get everybody out of here before any more <laughs> nonsense right. takes place. But right. yeah, they get a chance to hit. They do have a chance to still hit. It's the one-two home. Nobody out here. Bases are loaded. And Orange checks a swing and fouls it away. Yeah, and I think Kobos, he's the man for the rest of the game. Because if you look down, there's a lot of empty chairs in the bull. <laughs> there is no one down there but security guards. They're out of players. Told you they were seven pitchers ineligible to pitch today because of pitch restrictions, and they've used everybody else. Uh, looks like Oliver Perez who's there he although he is uh, still on site he may have been one of the players ejected as well. Ernie Witt's coming out to talk to home plate umpire Brian Gorman now. And I think Ernie Witt's 
his case here is that there's still debris there's still objects being thrown toward the Canada dugout somebody threw a baseball onto the field. Yeah. Yeah. You know at perhaps the case for for a forfeit was was made there by Ernie Witt. And let's just get everybody out of here. A warning's been issued. I guess they're talking about it now with the Mexico dugout. I wouldn't be surprised to see him bang this. Yeah. I mean, it, the stuff keeps coming out from the stands, and I don't think the umpiring crew is going to put up with much more of that. Two strikes to Kale Orange. Bases are loaded, nobody out. Swinging a high fly ball out to left. Edgar Gonzalez at the track. He will make the catch, tagging up at third to come in and score is Tim Smith. Two third is Lowen. And it's a 10 to 3 ball game. It's actually the pinch runner Robinson Center, that came around to score Smith to third. Brought to our attention too, Jim, that in a big league ball game, if uh, warnings are issued as they were, and then there's a hit batsman, managers usually run. That's not the case. Ernie Witt and Rick Renneria are both still here. Ruben Amaro in your picture there, one of the coaches for Team Mexico. Well, there's still a lot of nonsense going on in the stands, and that one bounces low. There is quite a bit of security personnel that we've seen here. Not only uh, stadium security, but you see Maricopa County Sheriff's officers are here as well. So it's a combination of stadium security and actual law enforcement. They have taken a much more visible role the last 10 minutes. A ball and two strikes to count to Tyson Gillies. Runners at the corners. A run in. It's 10 to 3 Canada. <laughs> Questions asked after the game. And I'm quite sure that both sides will be reluctant to discuss what's happened here the last half an hour or so. Gillies with a little dribbler in front of the plate. He lost his footing, but he's still able to throw out the speedy leadoff hitter for route number two. Attention fans, the World Baseball Classic asks for your cooperation in maintaining a safe and enjoyable environment here at Chase Field. Any further disruptions to the game may result in forfeiture of the game. Thank you. So the same admonishment coming over the stadium PA that we heard about 10 minutes ago. And here's now Taylor Green now. Baseman, Taylor Green. Well, I guess this is the other side, Jim, of uh, some of the passion that we've discussed the last 24 hours. 
and frustration on the part of uh, Mexico. Strikes. One of the other things I'm sure organizations, if they're watching, were concerned about. You know, there's always a question of if one of my players plays in the oh. World Baseball Classic and gets injured. But you read my they, mind. What if they got hurt in a brawl oh. like that? What, uh, what damage that would do to the image of the World Baseball Classic? I could see. Uh, I could see Walt Jockety's phone and Terry Ryan's phone and some nervous moments. Puts an end to the inning. Go to the bottom of the ninth. Interesting times in Phoenix. And a reminder this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the World Baseball Classic Incorporated and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. So there. Get our first look at uh, John Axford, one of Major League's better closers. Gil Velasquez will lead things off. 10 to 3 Canada, but a glance at the scoreboard does not tell the entire story. We've been talking so much about the ramifications of this game in terms of Pool D and who moves on to the second round, but the conversation has taken a turn after the brawl in the top of the ninth. Rene Tassoni hit by Arnold Leone. Alfredo Aceves was among those involved in a very ugly bench clearing incident. There's going to be a lot more on this in the uh, in the hours to come today. And we encourage you to stick right here with MLB Network. We're going to have Puerto Rico and Venezuela next, and then we're back here in Phoenix for the U.S. and Italy. And a call strike three taken by Velasquez. Let's send you back to the MLB Network studios to check in with Scott Braun. Well, Matt, Venezuela gets the scoring going. Marco Scudero brings home Omar Infante. That's off starting pitcher Nelson Figueroa. The starter on the other side, Carlos Zambrano. Nine up, nine down. One nothing Venezuela over Puerto Rico is your score. And as you mentioned, Matt, we'll take you live to San Juan following your game. Scott, thanks. And a Puerto Rico win over heavily favored Venezuela sends Venezuela home. One nothing Venezuela in the third. Walter Ibarra will bat now with one out and the base is empty. He entered the game last half inning. Lucky him. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things uh, with the brawl is that it might just be that some of the players don't understand the rules as far as a team trying to add runs to their total. You, know, you get frustrated and say, hey, I'm down nine to three in their leadoff bunt during the regular season. Certainly that would. Cause raised eyebrows in uh, probably a hit batsman, but not in this format. The 1 1 to Ibarra. And especially in Canada's case, because they lost by 10 yesterday. Sevis with a few welts. Yeah, he's looking like Y.A. Tittle at the end of his career. Well, to your point, Jim. I think there was uh, a little miscommunication on the Mexico side after that bunt. In fact, let's we got that ready. Let's take a look at this. This is Luis Cruz, and he's telling Arnold Leon, "Get him." Yeah. 
Oh See, boy. He, do, he doesn't understand the rules. That was after that the pitch dusted right. to Sony and, and he got out of the way. If I had to pick one guy that I would never want to anger in any circumstance, it would be Alfredo Aceves. It, it kind of looks that way. He, yeah. he frightens me on a good day, as a matter <laughs> of fact. Walter Barra with a fly ball out to center for Gillies. I was over in Australia and uh, met some of the Aussie Rules football players, and they struck me that way. I didn't really want to look and stare at them for too long. They're a little intimidating. Here's Romero Pena now. Luis Cruz moves on deck with two gone. And, and let's take you back. This was after the bunt. This is what started the whole thing in the night. All right. This is Chris Robinson bunts. And that's when Luis Cruz. Get him. Oh boy. And your point was spot on, Jim. The rules not completely being understood here in this tournament format. Bounce to Votto to ask recovery, and that puts an end to it this afternoon, and we hope it puts an end to all the nonsense at the same time. So Canada avoids elimination for the time being. All eyes will be on the U.S. and Italy tonight. Good thing they exchanged caps before the game, not after. It's a, it's a good point. What Mexico is hoping for now is for the U.S. to lose tonight and then beat Canada tomorrow. Italy's off to the next round. It's still to be determined who'll join them in Miami next week. When you get the sense that there is uh, not a whole lot of good feeling between these two teams at this moment. Well, it's uh, it, it's all a shame because when we saw that shot of uh, Luis Cruz. Doesn't understand the rules, and that's what precipitated it. I mean, we're not we're not reading into that, are we? That he picked up the ball, and are we really obvious? He, okay. he pointed and said, you know, hit him in the ribs. And uh, from, from Canada's standpoint, you score as many runs as you can, do you get a 10-run lead? Or early in the game, 15. Our Chevrolet player of the game here is Team Canada right fielder Michael Saunders. The Seattle Mariner had an outstanding afternoon. He and Justin Morneau combined to go eight for nine. Michael Saunders had four of those hits himself. He stole the base, scored two runs, and drove in three in route to Chevrolet Player of the Game honors this afternoon. All Canada today, 24 hours after being mercy ruled by Italy, they flip it around. They beat Mexico 10 to 3. Michael Saunders, your Chevrolet player of the game. Canada and Mexico now waiting and watching the U.S. and Italy tonight to see if, in fact, one of their two teams can join Italy on the way to Miami next week. That's going to do it for our first of two here in Phoenix. We remind you to stay with us on MLB Network coming up next. It's Puerto Rico and Venezuela. Jim, Sam, and I are back for the U.S. and Italy later tonight. For the rest of our MLB Network crew, we'll see you in a few hours. <laughs>